This is Karen Agopal Bog and we're just outside of Mount Bellew in East Galway and this is one of the biggest raised bogs in the country and it also contains one of the largest areas of uncut and intact raised bogs in the county. So this site is what's known as a candidate special area conservation and that's because of the small area of active raised bog and also the degraded raised bog habitats. So that means that it's important not only in the Irish context but also internationally. Most of our bogs in the country are in poor condition and that's because bogs like this they need to be wet and we've drained a lot of our bogs and also they've been cut for turf. Bogs like this, raised bogs like this, they take thousands of years to form and the piece that we're standing on has all the dead matter of grasses and reeds and rushes which are formed over thousands of years but once they're gone, they're gone and they won't form again. So we don't have a second chance when it comes to our bogs. And they take so long to form, but they can be destroyed very quickly through turf cutting, through burning, also planting of non-native conifers. So on a site like this, which is one of our largest remaining raised bogs in the country, the fact that there's still areas that are in good condition means that this site is absolutely precious. To a certain extent, bogs in Ireland, they're still thought of as quite dark places that are devoid of life and almost like a, a wasteland. But actually nothing could be further from the truth. And these are such rich ecosystems. A lot of the flora and fauna that live here are specialized, they're specially adapted over thousands of years to, to exist in these habitats. So there's a diverse range of habitats here at Cairnagopal. There's a large area of raised bogs with pools and fens and flushes. And then at the, towards the fringes of the bog, there's also woodland and wet meadows and then merges into farmland. So because of the mix of habitats, there's, there's such a diverse range of species. And given the size of the bog, it's also one of the most accessible of our raised bogs. There's a track that cuts right through it. So it's quite easy to come here and to just immerse yourself in the, in the surrounding nature. There's no better time to visit the bog, I think, than early on a spring morning. And I think any misconceptions that this place is devoid of life would be drowned out by the song of, by birdsong in the midst of the dawn chorus when all the birds are just awaking and out competing with each other to be heard. The history of this site, and, and all raised bogs like it, dates back over 10,000 years. And if we were able to jump into a time machine and go back 10,000 years, we would have found ourselves standing in the middle of a lake. Over time, that lake infilled, and eventually sphagnum mosses began to take over. And those sphagnum mosses, in creeping into the bog, started to form a dome shape, which gave the bogs their title, raised bogs. We're standing on approximately 10 metres of peat, so right down, I'm hot, a metre and a half, so there's a, a, a good few of me all the way down. But we're standing on deep peat, and thanks to our restoration, that deep peat is, is wetter than it, ever, than it ever has been. You'd think we're on a static environment here, but actually beneath us is 10 metres of continuously moving water. So a bog is very much a living, breathing thing. Bogs are like lungs or sponges in a way. They take in great amount of water, you know, rainwater that falls, and we certainly have a lot of it here in Galway. Uh, the bogs act as great kind of sponges taking in that water. So when you have your raised bog dome, it's ever, it's always ever increasing with water. And that water is always moving around underneath us, you know. But as well as all that water, of course, it's, it's locking in that carbon that's in, that's in the atmosphere. 
As Irish people, we didn't really know or appreciate that the answer to climate change was right underneath our feet in bogs like Galway's Ivan Bog here in Carnegie and Mount Bellew. It's one of Europe's most important raised bogs. It's absolutely alive with wildlife. All sorts, all manner of flora and fauna lives here and flies over it and, and relies on, on its hinterland. You know, we have um, everything from incredible, beautiful birds, unappreciated birds, an awful lot of them, to butterflies which fly from Morocco to Mount Bellew every year. You know, it, it really is a, a, a sight that's alive. But like every bog in Ireland, it was destined for another thing, you know, and that other thing was the hearts of the local community. But now, with restoration, it's, it's, it's going to serve the local community in a different way. And what our project, The Living Bog, has been doing here is restoring the bog. This bog, Carnegie or Galway's Living Bog, is something of a superpower in terms of Irish bogs and what's left of them. Uh, if you turn the clock back about 180 years ago, we had almost a million acres of active raised bog. Bog just like this, really wet, really deep peat, going down eight to 10 meters deep in peat. Now, about 16% of that figure is uncut, but only 1% of that figure would be a bog like Carnegie here, which is a wet living bog. When we came to Carnegie, it was much like every other uh, raised bog in the country. It, it had been drained, readied for peat extraction. It was drying out, it was shrinking in on itself, and it wasn't breathing anymore. It was leaching carbon into the atmosphere. Degraded, dried, drained, every, all the D words you don't want to hear with a bog. It was in a bad way. It was such a huge site that it shouldn't have been in such a bad way. So we had to set about restoring um, not just the high bog where we're standing, but also the cutover areas. One hectare of degraded raised bog is the equivalent of 10 diesel engines, 10 diesel cars sitting there with their engines on for a full year. So that one little hectare is going to emit the amount of carbon there. So if you restore that area of cutover, that area of degraded bog or re-wet it, you're taking that carbon out of the atmosphere. You're locking it into the ground and you're locking it into deep, deep ground. Not just that, we're seeing the wildlife return to the bog. We're seeing species and mosses in the bog that haven't previously been recorded. The marsh fritillary butterfly, for instance, was only barely recorded on the site. In the last year, two years, we've seen a huge increase in their numbers here through our butterfly surveys that have been done in conjunction with the local community. Well, strange as it may seem, I'm in Mount Bellio for 40 years and I only started coming down here about five years ago. I walk down here a good bit and it's, it's a great area to re relax and meet people. It's strange if you have a couple of dogs with you, they become a kind of a conversation piece and then you, you kind of start talking about other things in the book. And then I, I started some photography and I do mostly macro photography now, you know, and it's, it's very interesting. I found this uh, island here in the middle of the bog and the local people call it Patch's Garden. It's seemingly a man by the name of Patch Cronin lived there. He had a little house and he had a garden there and he was self-contained. And he used to walk out across through the bog. Uh, this, this was way before the roads were built. Galway Teleworks has done fabulous work up in the offices there near Montpellier. They have a designated room there now and they have a display, a big display on the, on the wall of all the features associated with the bog here.
you know, people think that you're coming to restore a bog and you're taking the people and you're taking the culture and you're taking the tradition off the bog. You know that, ah, oh, yeah, you're coming in here to restore a bog and that's it. We're not, you know, what we're trying to do is involve the people and reconnect people to the bogs. So as well as all our restoration works, on sites such as Carnegie which could support low impact amenity provision, we're devising amenities that will give a connection to the bog for a local community for, for many generations to come. You know, generations have fueled their homes here, but generations to come will be able to reconnect to this historic habitat that you know we had so much of, but now we're literally down to the last tiny percentage. Mm -hmm.